So this is the latest revision of the plank by Drop and OLKB. So what is the plank? In summary, the plank is a 40% ortholinear custom mechanical keyboard designed by Jack Humbert. So what does all of that mean? A 40% board is referring to the size of the board. If you take a look at a traditional full-size keyboard, you'll see the alphanumerics, where the letters and numbers are, a function row above that, a navigation cluster where your arrow keys belong, as well as an integrated number pad for quick data entry. For those who want a little bit more space on their desk and don't want a large keyboard taking all of it up, there are TKL or 10 keyless boards out there, mainly used by gamers, which forgoes the number pad for some extra space. For those who want an even more compact form factor, there's the 60% layout, which forgoes the navigation cluster, as well as the function row above the regular number row. If you want to go even smaller than that, you end up in the 40% category where the plank resides, which forgoes the number row, and you're just left with the alphas, as well as some mod keys. Of course, there are other form factors available other than the ones that I mentioned, but just for covering the basics, I'm not going to dive into those right now. While it's very common to find full-size TKL and 60% size keyboards out there, most consider the 40% category just a little bit too small for them to use as their daily driver. So I've been using the Plank as my daily driver for about two weeks now, and I can safely say that I really enjoy using it. The small size keeps my desk really clean, as well as the ortholinear layout has been really good for me ergonomically. Speaking of which, let's talk about what makes this board an ortholinear board. When you take a look at a traditional keyboard, you can see that each row of keys is staggered and offset as you move up and down between the rows. Whereas when you're using an ortholinear board, the keys will actually be aligned in a matrix grid, so there is no offset when moving between rows vertically. If you want to learn more about the differences between ortholinear layouts and staggered layouts, I highly recommend that you check out Ben Valak's YouTube channel where he talks about this using a Plank Easy keyboard as an example for the ortholinear side of the argument. Some people are very passionate about their layouts, especially those who are very passionate enthusiasts in the keyboard community. Sometimes it could come down to just personal preference or aesthetic preference. Um, there's definitely a visual argument to be made between ortho and staggered and uh, it's just something that you will have to find out if it matches your own personal tastes and preferences. One thing I should also mention is that this keyboard ships as a custom mechanical keyboard kit that you will have to assemble yourself. The keyboard kit from drop.com includes an anodized aluminum case in your choice of color a stainless steel plate, as well as the PCB. In order to have a completely assembled keyboard, you will need to purchase your own key switches, as well as a set of key caps to go along with it. On Drop's order page, you'll find a couple accessories listed, such as a key cap set that you can add to your purchase for additional costs. But you will need to source your own key switches in order to complete the build. So now that we covered what the basics of the board is, let's go into why I think somebody would consider buying it or consider looking at something else. First, let's take a look at price. The Plank Keyboard Kit comes in at $100 on drop, which is a relatively low entry level price compared to other custom mechanical keyboards on the market. Something else to consider for newbies to the custom mechanical keyboard scene is that drop.com is a very easily accessible and beginner friendly online vendor to get into the world of custom mechanical keyboards. So the ease of accessibility as well as the entry level price make this a great starter kit for those who want to try and test the waters of custom mechanical keyboards. Something else to keep in mind is that the PCB for the plank features hot swap sockets, which means that you don't need to solder on your switches and when you want to remove them, you don't need to desolder them. You can just plug in switches and pull them out whenever you feel like you want to change it up. I'd say the biggest deciding factor on whether this keyboard is for you is how dependent you are on the presence of a number row on your keyboard. 
I would say that if you're a hardcore gamer, then you might want to take a look at Drop's other ortholinear mechanical keyboard known as the Prionic, which is also designed by Jack Humbert and is just the bigger cousin of the Plank, featuring a number row above. I would say though, for just general purpose use for writing or programming, you'll find that you'll become very accustomed to the small size and the layout and that it's definitely worth a shot if you want to try something new. I think what the Plank really excels at is being a place where somebody can feel free to experiment in the face of the limited size. The fact that it's only a 40% keyboard means that you don't have to invest in a large amount of key switches in contrast to a full-size keyboard where you'd have to be buying 104 to 108 switches. If you want to try and completely change the tactile feel of your keyboard and you're using the plank, you only have to invest in a maximum of 48 key switches. And the fact that the PCB is hot swap capable makes that transition even easier. Something else that's really worth mentioning is the QMK firmware, which was also designed by Jack Humbert, the designer of this board, which is where you'll really unlock the full potential of this keyboard. The default layout is pretty good, and it's a good way to get started with such a small size. But once you've developed a familiarity with the 40% layout, the QMK firmware really lets you dig into the weeds to tailor fit the board to be exactly what you need and exactly how you want to use it. There is an online configurator for the QMK firmware, which gives you a nice graphical user interface to customize the bindings of your keyboard. But if you want to go even deeper, you can dive into the source code yourself, as QMK is a completely open source firmware. And I know that this isn't everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody is comfortable programming, and uh, not everyone is comfortable with flashing the firmware on their keyboard. But the Plank makes that really easy, even going as far as to include a physical reset button for when you want to flash a new version of the firmware onto your keyboard. I decided to actually go into the code myself and change up the firmware. Um, that way I can mess with some of the fun sandbox parts of the keyboard, such as the fact that the keyboard has a speaker integrated into the PCB that lets it sort of act like a miniature synthesizer. When you uh, hold a certain key combination that enters the board into a sort of music mode where it becomes a sort of electronic instrument. And uh, that speaker also can play certain chimes or ringtones per se when you're changing the board into certain modes. So uh, to kind of finalize everything, I would say that this keyboard is really for those who want to start out on a low budget, want something compact and portable to travel with, as well as something that they can tinker around with and experiment with because the customizability of this board, it makes it really versatile. I would say that you might want to take a look at some other options if you are a hardcore gamer as the lack of a number row can be pretty detrimental for fast-paced gaming. Uh, you can get away with it if you're playing a sort of casual game, something slower, but if you're playing something that's very intense and very fast-paced, then having to go into one of the keyboard's layers to hit a number key or some other binding that you can't reach on the default layout will make things pretty difficult.
so that basically wraps it up i really hope you guys enjoyed my very first keyboard review this is uh very new to me but i hope i could shine some light on this product and um, help you make your decision of whether it's for you or not if you like this video leave a like and if you want to see more keyboard content in the future from me then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell that way you're notified if i release any videos and you could be the first one to see it i do already have projects lined up and on the way for future videos and future content and some of that content will be here on YouTube, as well as live content such as build streams and whatnot will be on my Twitch channel, linked in the description. But that's all I have for you today. I hope to see all of you in the next video.